welcome to this uh, gathering. It is this gathering is a gift from the Methodist communities in Glasgow and around Glasgow to the whole world. Since its earlier century, Christian communities have set aside a day in the year to remember those who have gone before us, testifying of their faith in their way of life, stretching across centuries and millennia and around the whole world. It is a day we remember saints. There's men and women that testified in their action and being what it means to be fully and truly children of God. However hard it may sometimes be to follow the way of Jesus in our own time and place, this is a day to remember that with the saints, we may be seen by the outside world as mad because of our faith and commitment to follow Christ. But as Christ is the light of this world, we know we are right. Also, we are not alone. We are part of God's family. To reflect on the saints, I would like to invite you for a walk in the forest. I feel that saints are a bit like trees, offering us beauty, presence, and the oxygen of faith. So join me in the walk. A time to pause. Let us open our heart to God and join together, sharing the prayer called the glory. Glory, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now and will be forever. And sing with me, please, this hymn, which is a testimony of our appreciation to be part of God's family. Father God, I wonder how I manage to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. Hymn 72. Let us start our walk in prayer. Almighty Divine Mother, indeed we are your children and we come to you with mixed feeling of humility, love and wonder. You, the great creator of heaven and earth, us, the stubborn, destructive and greedy people. You, the pure, generous love, us, the judgmental, unsensitive and selfish people. You the steadfast and eternal comforter, us, 
but volatile, disloyal, and overconfident people. You, the creator of these trees, and us, the polluters. And yet, you are here. And yet, we are here. Despite all our limitations and weaknesses, you love us like your own children. You open your arms each time we have hurt ourselves and others with our follies and misbehaviors. You are here. We are here. Forgive us for rejecting you and your message. Today, we are looking at those we call saints, who seem to have understood you. We look at them with admiration as heroes almost untouchable and unreachable. We know and we pray that when the opportunity arises for us to stand up in the court of your saints, we will find courage in your grace to walk the way you are calling us, knowing that we are here and you are here. Your children, your saints. Amen. And now we will hear our first reading, read by Ruth. First letter of John, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we will should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know, him, know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are the children of God now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we, will, what we do is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we, for we will see him as he is. And all those who have this hope in him can purify themselves, just as he is yeah. That is the end of the first reading. Thank you, Ruth, for this reading. It is a real inspiration. On this All Saints Sunday, we are pausing and reflecting on those we call saints. Saints are people who have done amazing things in the name of God. People who have reflected God's light in their being and doing. Things which are completely incomprehensible very often, defying human logics, almost mad. During this time, let me introduce you to two of my countrymen and women, Adelaide Audval and Christian de Cherge, people you may never have heard of. I thought it may make a change from the usual pantheon of English-speaking saints. So, do you know the Dr. Audval? Let me introduce you to Dr. Adelaide Odval. This woman was the daughter of a pastor from Alsace in the east of France. During the Second World War in occupied France, she refused to deny Jewish people their humanity. She refused complacency. She refused to be a silent accomplice. The way she was arrest arrested is telling. Adelaide Odval was waiting on the platform in a station, train station, waiting to see her dying mother. She saw at the end of the platform a Jewish family being molested by Nazi sympathizer. Other people watch away, not, not wanting troubles. Adelaide intervened to defend the Jewish family. Police arrived and took side of the bullies. Adelaide took side for the family. She said very loud that Jews were like everybody else and deserved respect. She is of course arrested and sent to prison, where she helped other prisoners. She is asked to retract what she said in public. She refused and therefore sent to Auschwitz. Because she was a doctor, she could save her life by accepting to work in the medical experiments block, as many other arrested doctors did. She first hesitated because she thought, if I'm not doing it, someone else will, and that person could be worse than me. 
but reflecting, praying, she decided to decline and join the other prisoners. She refused to do evil, just saving her life or listening to comforting but false excuses. She knew that as humans, we can give ourselves the best excuses to not do what we should. She continued to save countless lives in the camp. She had to hide as guard were looking for her to hang her. Her crime was she was helping others, even in the hell of a concentration camp. At the liberation of the camp, she came back home quietly and resumed her life. There's many ways we can see her saint aspect of Adelaide Odval. The way she refused complacency, the way she refused the banality of evil, the way she just acted the way she was, not looking for special sainthood or special respect or regard. She was who she was. We have often the best reason ready to avoid our responsibilities. We are naturally cowards. Many people would see Adelaide either as a superwoman or an idiot. An idiot? Well, some may think, if not say, she could have avoided all this trouble for herself just by minding her own business. Who does she think she is? She didn't see her mother on her deathbed because of an unknown Jewish family who were condemned anyway. She didn't save her. She didn't save them. Her duty surely should have been to her own family. She could have endangered her own family with her actions. So yes, some people may see her as an idiot, especially at the time of the action. Superwoman? What she did is so incredible, so courageous, so great, that she may look almost untouchable. What she was and did almost created a distance, a cliff, a wall between her and us. Maybe we are tempted to say, I would have never found the courage to do that. I can't, I'm too much a coward. But Adelaide was neither an idiot or a superwoman. She's just a saint. She's just a disciple of Christ. John in his letter said, the world doesn't know you because it doesn't know Christ. Adelaide was born and educated in the light of Christ, where she was told we are all children of God. That message of Christ was so embedded within her that it became her. It was not a second nature, it was her nature. She didn't need to pray, to read the Bible, to know what to do. God, God shined in her and through her. That is what John means. Saints seem unreal if we don't know Christ. People don't decide to become saints. They are saints because they have activated their Christian DNA. They have left grace to act in them. Adelaide didn't believe that she did what she did was extraordinary. She did it because she was her. I pray God that the day if God wants me to experience this day, I won't be a coward, but let God's grace speak in me and use my body for his or her purpose. I pray that as John said, I will be purified in Christ's purity. Now, let us hear from another John, John of the Revelation. That will be our second reading. It is a very flowery and symbolic text with a lot of interesting images, as the book of Revelation is. But let yourself open your heart and your mind to his message about the saints. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne 
and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The second saint I would like to talk to you today is a group of men, monks. Their very poor monastery was in one of the poorest parts of Algeria, in the north of Africa, a place called Tiberin. The monks offered basic medical care, basic agricultural training, some jobs and food to the local people. They were not involved in evangelization or anything like that. They were Cisterians. These three men dedicated their life to God's kingdom in these very remote places. They were in a dangerous place. Some could argue they had nothing to do in this place. It was not their country. Reading their letters and testimony, it becomes clear that they had all the reason to be there. These villages are isolated and poor, with no access to health services. These villages were dangerous because on the fighting line between Islamist terrorists and government troops. The monks were hated by both sides. The Islamist terrorists because they were Christian, the government forces because they were potentially embarrassing witnesses, but loved by the locals. So why do I believe they are saints? They could have evacuated, they could have been safe, easily going back to their country. They were told to go home, even by the hierarchy. When they had to take the decision to stay or to leave, they prayed, they argued, they cried, but they also discerned that their calling was to be among the very poor people of Tiberin, even if the population was not Christian and showed no interest to become Christian. All other institutions left the villages. The monastery was the only institution left. If the monks left it, it would have said to the local people, your life is not worth ours. The monks knew their life may end tragically, but they felt if they left, they would have taken with them any hope the people in these villages had. So they stay, leaving their destiny in God's hand. In March 1996, Seven out of the eight monks were kidnapped from their monastery and were decapitated. Their bodies were never found, only their heads. Let me read their names. Christian de Cherger, Paul Dauchier, Christophe Le Breton, Michel Fleury, Christian Le Marchand, Célestin Ringard, Paul Favmiville. Christian de Cherger was leading the ministry, the monastery. Sorry. A movie was made of their audit. The movie is called Of Gods and Men, and it is based on Christian de Cherger's di diary. There were eight monks in the monastery when they were kidnapped, and one escaped to testify. 
John Wesley, in his journal on Monday, the 29th November 1762, remind us that sense actions or life are not supernatural, but a fruit of God's love. They were and are humans like us. They are not a cross between humanity and angels, but saints are imperfect as we are. In his sermon called Plain Account on Christian Perfection, Wesley associated sanctification with individuals participating in the recreation, the restoration of the imago dei, the image of God in us. Sanctification comes from an exceptional ability to surrender and say yes to God in an exceptional time. Saints are human, but at one point, sometime a long period and sometime repeated, but not always, they put God's calling before their own interests and fears. They become incarnation of God's grace. Dr. Adelaide Odval and Tiberin's brothers gave up on themselves to let God's grace taking their self at a time of incredible stress and fear. They are saints. They invite us to follow their example in trusting God in the most difficult times of our life. So yes, we should recall saints and reflect on their sanctification. We may be called on day, one day to sanctification ourselves. Not to become superheroes, but to be truly and fully God's children. Blessed be the saints of old and now who show us and inspire us on the path to the divine light. Let us pray. Almighty God, when the time comes, equip us with strength, courage and discernment to be your saints, your true children. Give us the confidence to know we are right to follow your calling, even though some want to label us as mad or idiots. Lord, may we always find comfort in your voice, in your path and in your light. May we find strength to reconcile ourselves and the world with your kingdom through your divine love. Amen. And now join me to sing together hymn 503, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, Joy of Heaven to Earth Come Down.
Let us praise God. Lord, our comforting mother, creating father, guiding spirit and reconciling son, we express our gratitude that we know of your presence in our life around us. We thank you for our family and friends and the good memories of the departed. We bless your name for peace and relative material comfort we are living in. We praise you for showing alternative ways of life through your teachings and the example of saints. We praise you for our bodies and the world you created around us. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us share together the prayer that Lord Jesus taught us in a manner and a language we feel the most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing together our last hymn to recall and thanks all the saints in history, present and to come, who can inspire us to become Christian, living in the true love of God, for all the saints who showed your love. Him for 746. For all the saints who showed your love are a glimpse of your kingdom. comes to a close today as we celebrate All Hallows, All Saints and All Souls Days and as we look forward to our thankful days of rememberings, I offer this final prayer. Some words from a hymn. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. 
most blessed, most glorious, the Ancient of Days. Almighty Victorious, thy great name we praise. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the trees, and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Eternal God, hope of all who trust in you, raise us from death to life, so that we may join that great crowd of saints who forever sing praise to your holy name. Through Christ, the resurrection and the life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, whose sunrise wakes us and sunset amazes us, whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, transform us and empower us to serve you this day and always. As we have celebrated our continuing communion with all your saints, keep us looking to Jesus and help us to keep giving a clear witness to him, living the holy lives you have called us to live, standing tall and strong by the power of the Holy Spirit. A final blessing. Support us, O Lord, all the day long, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life over and our work done. Then, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.